What's up everyone, MCJ Matt Collins Jones here, back with another video on Power Ultimate. And today we're looking at SharePoint actions and we're gonna look at the action which is create item. So create item is the ability to create an item in a list in SharePoint. So if you have lists populated with various pieces of information, you can use the create item to create a new row in that list. So let's take a look at it. So in Power Ultimate here, I'm in the new designer. I've got a manual trigger to trigger this flow. I'm going to choose insert a new step and add an action. Then we're going to search SharePoint. We'll choose see more on the connector and then we'll choose create item down here. Now it's going to ask us for a couple pieces of information to start with. One is the site address and one is the list name. If I hard code in my site address for this instance, you can use the environment variable, you can pass it from a, another part of the flow. Um, I'm just doing this for, for demo purposes. Uh, list, uh, list name, we're going to choose our MCJ list one, which is one of our test lists here. You can see it updates as soon as I choose these things. So it's updated and it said, hey, there is a there is a title here that's a required field. So we can see that metadata is updating. It's pulling data from that SharePoint list and saying, hey, for this flow to create an item in that in that row, you need, uh, you need to add the title in. This is the same as what you see with most of the connectors as well, where you're inserting data. Now, one thing that is interesting down here is well, a couple of things that are interesting down here is once we have the title, so we can put in something like um, this is an automated uh, item. We have these advanced parameters and you may notice that there's one that's come through by default that says yes or no and this this is a this is an item this is a column in my in my list and i have to set the default property to yes and therefore it's showing here which is a bit strange um, if i choose the drop down for show parameters i have a couple of different options i've got limit columns by view amount and add number now the interesting thing about this is this is kind of like an amalgamation of both settings and columns. So if we just hit click show all for instance, this top one is actually a setting. So this is a setting for the flow uh, and for this action in particular. Whereas these other ones, amount, yes or no and add a number are actually columns of that view. So what, uh, what this setting actually does up here is it changes the columns that it shows to you based on what you want to do. So use columns, use all columns, do not limit is the default action here, but there's a few other options. So we've got use all columns, and then what we have is um, the names of two views. So if I click, up, click over to my SharePoint site and show you for a second, this is my SharePoint site. This is my MCJ list one, and we can see these items in here. And then we can see we've got one column here that says amount but then there are no other columns. Now this is a view, so this is a subsection of data that I've, I've determined, hey, only show these columns on this view. I have a secondary view over here, this is MCJ test view. And on here I have more options. So I have my title, I have my amount, I have a yes or no column, and I also have an add new, uh, add a number column here. <clears throat> so. Previously, I've already created these items, so that's why there's not a default yes and no here. If I went, went in to add a new item, what it'll do is it'll default that yes, yes here. So that's why it's appearing in the flow, just to show you. So if I go back to the flow for a second. So if I click on the all items option here, um, what you'll notice is that it updates, and it's taken away my title, which is great. Um, but now it's only showing one of two parameters. So if I click on show all parameters here, we've got the amount here. So that's the column that's on that view. So if I go back to that view for a second, we can see that we have title, ID is a system column, so it's not gonna show because we can't create that manually. And then we have amount in here. So that's what shows there. And if I chose my MCGA test view, again, it's just gonna pull this one through by default, but I can show all, and I can now see these other columns in there as well. So. So multiple options here, so you can specify a view or you can use all columns. So we'll put in a title, this is an automated item. And we'll, we'll use this um, MCJ test view. Um, we'll put an amount of 12 and a number of one. And we'll default this to no, for instance, and we'll test this out. So we'll choose publish. We'll go to test. We'll manually perform the trigger. 
Test the flow, run flow, click done. And we can see that it's now created data. So if we go back to the site and we refresh this page, we should see a brand new item down here. Um, the, this is an automated item. So we can only see, uh, so if we switch over to our other view, um, there, um, we can see this is an automated item. We've got uh, the, the amount in here. It does not seem to pull through the yes or no for some reason. Uh, I definitely selected yes, right? That's right. I'm not sure why that did that. Oh, it must be because it's a Boolean field. Ah, it's blank because it's no. Right, yeah, that makes sense. Um, and then and then we've got the number in here. So yeah, every day is a scroll day when you learn this sort of stuff. So yeah, so that's the ability to automatically create an item. So you notice that the amount um, is, is actually a currency field. So I put 12 in and it's, it's defaulted it to the currency that I specified when I created the column in SharePoint. So I created a column that is a uh, Great British Pounds column. I put in 12, it's defaulted it to 12 pounds uh, and zero pence. Uh, and the number is just a number num number column in there. So yeah, that's why you have that. So there you go. That is create item in, in SharePoint. So what do you guys think? Do you do you use create item a lot? What do you use it for? Do you trigger it from potentially sort of power apps and things like that to create items? Is it something that you pass information to all the time or is it something that you maybe do or do as a like a one-off or a static thing? Let me know in the comments down below. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, if you could share it with a friend and drop a like on it, that'd be great. If you've not already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you next time.